for today, we're going to look at my eight week version. And then I'm going to, then I'm building also a uh, Pulse 351 that I'm going to address to while I'm up here. But my uh, Pulse 202 is an uh, introduction to. I hit the wall. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> uh in introduction to public administration and, and when we talked in the in the, the midterm here that's very hard to get anyone interested in I mean, a lot of political science students are interested in politics or becoming a lawyer but to come become a public administrator yeah not but the, the most fun is here and and i've got to try to sell this and and so i have uh what i've done We've made week we've made modules. Come on. Okay. And where I break it down into into different themes, um, uh, introduction to public administration to get to get it going, and then I start talking about organizational behavior. Uh, and I think that um, this kind of leads into my uh, leadership class because or understanding organizational behavior is, is also to learn to manage that. And, you know, and to have the skills, to, you know, to to deal with all the different parts, and and being a, a manager or a leader in in public administration is a little bit more difficult because then really the private sector, because a lot of times your boss will move away from you, you know, and if if, if the policy or the program that you're carrying out is not very popular, you know, suddenly no one knows you, and and you're there to you know to pull it along. So there's a lot of challenges associated with that. And, and so I really get deep into the organizational behavior. And then the whole theme of it, I use my uh, online discussions to try to put them in a situation where they're almost experiencing that, you know, towards, and, and I talked about that at the midterm, I divide them into two groups, suns and stars. And all the extra credit that they can earn in the semester is going to be through playing this, discussion game with me really through the week because I, I, I'm, I'm very sports oriented and I, everything's a game to me so <laughs> in order to get a better reaction out of them I thought well you know I can play with them you know by going about this so I divided them into suns and stars and each week we go through the case studies in the Kettle book and Kettle is, is, is one of the most famous in the public administration he's, he's put out a, a really nice book with uh, case studies that are applicable to the to what to what he's teaching, and so you can go in and we can talk about uh, national security uh, uh, surveillance kind of things, becoming a surveillance state. You know how the little um, cameras on police cars that are surveying your your license plate, so they can basically detect where you are and track your movements, even though you you have they have no reason to do that. And so, to what degree do you allow? these kind of programs and policies and things to interfere in your life and it goes all the way to the end to where i, I think that we we even get into the discussion on uh, marijuana being legal at state level and then the problems with it with the federal level and so you know how how that's all playing out and, and students are interested in that kind of thing so you know by the by the 12th week when, when the marijuana uh, subject comes up and everybody's interested so <laughs> that's uh kind of some of the topics that I, that I pull them in to, to do and dividing them into these groups to do these discussions and, and using voice thread to do it, I can inter, I can interject myself into the conversation and I can be teaching along with, as, as while I'm trying to, you know, pull them deeper into the conversation. And in my modules, let me just pull out for like two, for example, we have a, a list of things to do each week. Is it going? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, it's just a, a, a few uh, PowerPoint slides with some questions on it that I get them to, to dig into. But here's my to-do list. And I also, I have the main points. Kettle, uh, the publisher, he did a really good job of giving me uh, some main point uh, PowerPoints that are quick to go through so they can while well, we're doing discussion and, and they're adding to it and they're trying to to compete for the, each week for the golden brains uh, you know here's some of the uh, this the stuff that they can look at and add to it so 
uh, I have um, some multimedia related to uh, pop culture. Like I'll use um, Comedy Central's and Daily Show and, thing, and things like that. And then also from news reports from, the, you know, from that zeitgeist or, or that period. And so a really good student is going to go through everything that I have here because they're going to want to, to win that week's discussion. So, so they're, they're really going to embedded in all this are all, you know, the more I embedded, you know, some of the, some of the more they're going to go after it. And so I know I have kind of a bimodal distribution of students. Some of that is, I just want to get by, I just need a grade. And then I'm going to have students that are, that are going to bite, you know, and, and take off with it. So I don't want them to be bored, but I'd like to get a little bit more buy-in from the people that are like, oh gosh, public administration, you know? And so that's what I'm trying to do is just, you know, kind of, you know, make it a little taunt, uh, more taunt and get a little bit more robust discussion going on. And then over the period, I have two different uh, papers that they're writing, but they're writing sections of it and building on it. And so the first, first two parts is they actually look at an agency and I'm kind of steering them a little bit more towards a, a set number of agencies that I, I want them to look at that I'm familiar with really, and preferably FEMA. I talk about FEMA a lot in my lectures because you know I'm a disaster researcher by design. That's, so sometimes that gets their attention a little bit by talking about some of, you know, that's always interesting. So they're going to study the agency first, in the first half, and then that'll be a midterm. And then the final, well, they'll actually take a policy or a program. And if they're really smart, they'll use the agency from the first half. So they have it, you know, come together really nice and smoothly. But then they'll evaluate a policy and this kind of addresses the whole idea of the politics and administration dichotomy and you know the battle between efficiency and equity and what i like about what well, <laughs> to, to start with this in the beginning is a lot of bricks everywhere and it's the same with the, the leadership thing is is how do you put it together and i was and i think that 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 my design team, I think Laura and Louis, Louis did a really good job with me because I'm really rowdy. I have ADHD. Like that was I scored on that test better than any other test I've ever had. <laughs> 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 you know, and, and they put up with that. And you know, and I started like, this is what I want to do. And then they would help me organize myself and organize my content. And and, and you know, and, and so they were really, really good for me. We couldn't pick a better pair to, to take but care of me. Great idea. Seems like well, so creative. So I I had a lot of fun with him too because you know I I like to cut up and carry on and and, and but Laura's really really good at keeping me in line and keeping me. <laughs> <laughs> and keeping me out of the rabbit holes, you know, it's like, look at this. I did this yesterday, you know, <laughs> let's get back to work. <laughs> and, and, and I, you know, thinking about it, and first of all, I, don't, don't be sad about this, but I feel like I'm a reflection of you all. I was here as an undergrad and in, in, in graduated as an undergrad in 2004, right? I'm, I'm your product. And, and so now I'm back and I'm a real grasshopper at teaching as well because I, I had to learn, you know, how to talk in front of, of students in, in a lecture, and then I had my first ugly online experience, summer one, oh my gosh, you know, so now you're making me a better teacher as well, you know, I mean, an instructor, professor, whatever, I mean, all the way around, the USI culture, people at USI have really, you know, turned me into something, and, and so this, this is just a, a, another, another way to polish me, and, and I'm, now I can see from the first year of teaching and going into the second year how I, I need to learn to stay on topic. I need to learn how to stay on, you know, on my learning objectives and things like that. And one of the things that Laura recommended and I really liked was at the end of each one of my lectures, I put my learning objectives up on the very last slide again. So 
yeah <laughs> one way or another i covered it <laughs> but yeah no that, that you know the, to remind them you know this is where i've been and remind me where i've been too because i have a really you know i can i can go off so <laughs> let me go on to my next one um again because i really like the the way that 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 we come up with the the discussion i i went on and did it again in my leadership course and i can kind of plug my Lord, can you help me so this kind of builds into the pulse 351 but the pulse 351 is a leadership course and and then we're going to use it also for the professional studies and it, one of the things about leadership is can you really study it I mean, can it be taught? Is it born? You know, and so it's interesting whether or not you're a political scientist or. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> For whatever reason, like you. Yeah. Okay. So then again, also think I'm a girl and I'm teaching leadership. Mm. Am I really qualified to do that? Am I going to get the respect that I deserve to teach leadership? Do I really know what I'm talking about? You know, how can I quantify myself to be a leader to make you a leader? And so one of the things that came up in um, uh, this year is uh, there's a new book. It's McManus and Carucci, and they kind of put all the bricks together for the leadership deal. So they say, you know, let's talk about this. There's leadership education. There's leadership development. And so there's three different legs of leadership, and this is how I am qualified to teach it to you, you know, you know, among things. I started my, you know, I was late, late bloomer. I didn't start college until I was 35 years old. So, but yeah, so I'm standing for the students, and no, I've not won a Nobel Prize. I've not done, you know, much of anything like that, but I can still be a leader, and I can still back that up. And so what I did is, one of the things that happened was when I went over to Louisville to get my PhD, uh, you guys know Dr. Morris, M.T. Morris, her and her husband had come over and visit me about once a month. They found out that I was playing tournament chess and I had 40 chess games going and she shut me down and she took my password and changed it so I couldn't get into it until I finished that summer. She took it all away. <laughs> but my, uh, but my, my, my password was LB the Fearless Bug. And that comes from an Asian uh, sort of a leadership kind of thing is, is to make yourself humble, you know, to, you know, to teach, you know, your it's sort of from a, like karate kid, the grasshopper, you know, like that. So what we did is I did the discussion again, and now I have bumblebees and grasshoppers and they're going to compete and I'm going to use this new McManus and Perucci book. And what I really like about this is not only does it start talking about the leaders, but it talks about the followers. And followers are really, really important in public organizations. So then I get to tie that back in there. And then we get to talk about cultures. And see, so we're becoming a global economy. So now I get to look at, the, thanks to this book, and then I have two more. I have a Den Heart, which is really, really, my students said last, last time I taught it was boring. But it, the assessments in it helped them tether out where their strengths and weaknesses are. So I kept the Den Hart book. I added Pearson so they could be more focused on the different varieties of leadership, like transactional, transformational, servant, the different kinds of leadership. But then I have McManus putting it all back together and then changing it to so where, look, you know, Latin leaders are, are, are um, have a different type of leadership quality. Asian leaders do. Uh, Islamic, and it's sometimes it's going to make them really uncomfortable to watch an Islamic leader describe what he thinks is or, uh, the true virtues of leadership in his culture, but you got to learn that. And so this is a kind of safe way for me to teach it because, you know, being online and having a controversial subject like that, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a kind of a safety net for me too, and it's going to make me better so I can teach them all these things have value. If just like men in, in political science and you have two, two very polarized uh, types of ideologies and you have to get learned how to give generous to another, you know, ideology. And one of the exercises is to explain 
your your point of view if you disagree with me and give generous to it almost be become that and so i spend all this time especially with public administration uh, public administration political science students is getting them back towards the middle and away from such a polarization so these are some of the things that i'm doing in this leadership class and the way we set it up with the discussions again, like public administration, it just builds on it. And I think that, that, that those races are gonna get even, you know, be even more fun. And then because it's an eight week course, I really like it because 16 weeks was too much to keep the momentum and the motivation you go into now, it's like packed dynamite. So I ended the, uh, the, pre the, the course with a, an exercise I call kicking the ladder. It comes from Sun Tzu. You kick the ladder, either they climb or they fall, okay? And it's also a, a based upon an, arg an article called Learning Through Rare Events. So we're gonna do a tabletop exercise. <clears throat> and with that tabletop exercise, they're gonna become a director of the b &O Railroad Museum up in, Mal in, in Maryland, and the roof collapsed. And one day we're just going to pop on there. It's five o'clock in the morning and you got to deal with a class collapsed roof. And so they'll go through what to do first, shut the water off, or shut the gas off, you know, and all these things. If they mess up during the tabletop, which I expect them to do. If they argue during the tabletop, I expect them to do, to do all these different things. Their final paper is their way of saving themselves. You have to own everything that you didn't do. You have to be able to congratulate, you know, your colleagues that got it right. That's hard to do too. I don't want you to do it right, right? So to be able to do that and then to be able to acknowledge kind of the aha light comes on is learning through rare events. You know, when I taught this the first time they were mad. We didn't go over this in class, <laughs> you know? It's an emergency, you should learn how to handle it. It's a crisis, deal with it. And how you perform, you lessons learned and you go on and you do it again. But they say, well, you have disaster landing experience. So that's why we didn't. And so there was really strong feelings both ways. But then when I got to the end of the class and we started talking about it and I said, what was the most important thing? Kicking the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they didn't necessarily like it, but they respect it. So that's how I'm closing that one out. But thanks a million, you guys. You're all of you. <laughs> well, I do need to give Linda a lot of credit because she actually did two courses at one at the oh. same time. And it's because uh, BTS, you really need her to be able to do courses so we can get out the results and things. So a lot of work. So it's like, <laughs> thanks. And very clear that in terms of the activity design, a lot of the time we focus a lot on the blackboard navigation design, but really, how do you reach students to kind of facilitate to learn the content? I think these kind of ideas is something that makes the difference. So really good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.